So primary drive cover and all the clutch assembly is on. What I'm doing now is I'll go on to doing the barrel. So we'll put our barrel studs in. And I actually do lock tight these in, that's a bit much. With um, a bit of 200 grade lock tight. And the reason for that is when I go to torque up the nuts, um, these don't spin. And the other reason is I don't screw these all the way into bottom out. I screw them down till, till they've got about like one and a bit threads, threads showing. So I find that that gives me the correct height for when I do my do my, do my nuts up. So you get a full full nut engagement. Okay, so a couple of things when fitting up your base gasket. Fit it on dry and make sure that you don't have any paper overhanging into your transfer ports. That really severely upsets the flow from your crankcase up into your cylinder and can affect performance. So on the old girls like like these, they need every bit of help they can get to run run as good as they as they um as they can. So we're going to go and drop oil this bore up, and I'll drop the piston in and start getting ready to actually drop the whole lot on. I'll put some sealant on surfaces on the barrel. Uh, I leave the gasket with the barrel and have the piston in there and drop it down, gouge and pin in. All right, so we've got. Our, our, piston, our pistons in, gudge and pin clips, uh, make sure that they're definitely seated, like actually push against them when you're, when you're putting them in. And we'll just give this a little bit of a wiggle and it should, oh, it should come down. Oh. like that. Okay, so from here, I will clean up these surfaces. I'll put a bit of thread lubricant on these and I'll clean up my mating surface on the head with methode. Because I'm not using a head gasket, I just want to make sure these are absolutely and spotlessly clean. All right, head, head's now on, um, and because I've used thread lubricant, you, it can give you a bit of a false um, torque reading because you haven't gotten as much drag on the, on, the, um, on the bolt. So I just torque them up to the minimum, minimum uh, torque, which is 18 foot pound. But I actually creep torque it from I'll go around at 14, go around at 16, and then final torque it at um, 18. Radio, so now we've got our final torque done up. It's time to go back in and remember these two screws here. Get those in and get those tightened up. All right, so now I'm going to fit up my um, gaskets and my bearing retainer and my main shaft oil seal holder. Now, the thing to remember with this, when you go to fit this one, don't do the screws up. Fit this in first to centralise it, then do your screws up. Alright, as I said, um, film of oil on this, 
bit of oil in your seal, fit that up like so, then put your screws in. So that way you know that your seal and your sleeve are all nicely centralised to each other. Okay, so sprockets now on. Just drop our lock tab washer in. And just remember, this is a left hand thread. Left hand thread. So, very fine. Can be a little bit ticky touch to get on. Like I'm not demonstrating very good hand skills, am I? Um, so once you've got it on, and once you do it up, get a like a feeler gauge and go in behind your sprocket to the to the sleeve and make sure you've got no no clearance in there because sometimes these this one's not too bad because you can do that but some sprockets depending on the manufacturer are really pretty tight to get on so sometimes they hang up just off that sleeve so okay we've got our lock tab washer on don't forget to put your Clutch push right in, push push as well. All right, CDI rotor's on. I've done the critical measurement, which is across the face of the rotor and the, the gap in between here, off this face in here. If, it's, if the rotor sits out too far, the rivets inside the rotor end up contacting the windings and chew it out. That's why there's a critical dimension you know, when you see it in the instructions. So I'll throw the starter plate on and get it all set up. All right, so we've got the we've got the rotor on and we're just about to set uh, correct position before top dead center. I just have a thin down six millimeter, six millimeter, six inch ruler that I use to Set me position before top dead center. So we'll get this stator on. All right, stator, excuse me, stator plate is all on. And we're just about to fit the points covering. Now these screws are not metric, they're not Whitworth, they are BA, British, British Association. So, on your bikes, anything that's electrical, like up in your headlight switch and everything like that, those threads are BA, and they are totally different to anything. So even on the even on my CDI stator, they're the correct BA thread. So if you can't find the screws, go on our website because we've got them, and there's no. There's no reason to put the wrong sort of wrong sort of screws in because they are available. They might not be available at Bunnings or down at your local bloody hardware store, but they are available. So spark plug in and that's our engine back together. Now what I've got to do is have a little bit of a tidy up and then get into this carby. All right, this is our carby, and we do have some major issues with this. Um, you can see the main jet's been broken off in there, which has rendered that completely useless. Um, I don't know if you can pick up on this slide how badly worn it is. I mean, it's worn away all there, so that's trash as well. Uh, someone in their infinite wisdom has gone and jammed these screws into the carby bowl. And as I said before, not only does electrical gear have British Association threads, so do things like instruments in these carbies. So um, I'm going to have to drill and tap that out and try and get something to be able to salvage this carby. Um, it otherwise looks not, not too bad. Uh, the float is badly dinged up and if you can hear that, that's that stuff in your carby. That's a lump of lead solder inside your, uh, sorry, inside your float. So dints like this are from people pushing the tickler down really, really hard, and it actually ends up denting the, denting the top of the float. But 
if you can pick that up you can hear that that's a lump of lump of um, lead solder inside so that's trash as well they're trash so luckily enough I do stock some parts and uh, I've got I was lucky enough to have a slide which won't fucking fit wouldn't you know it so just as well I've got slides on the way I'll go and have a look and see if I've got another good one. That might be an oversized one for some reason. Anyway, we'll go and have a look in my second hand stock. That's the remnants of the of the main jet that was in the in the bottom of that. So we've got a little bit of work to bring this back up, but we'll see how we go. Uh, air filter or strangler. I'm going to drop that in the ultrasonic bath. Um, I think it's clagged up with dirt. I've blown through it with an with the air um, air gun and it hasn't got a really good flow through it so I just wonder if it's just clagged up with shit uh, but we'll drop that in the ultrasonic bath and give that a good clean and, and see if we can get a better flow I'll obviously put all these in the ultrasonic bath as well um, and we'll start working through the uh, repairs that we're going to do I'll see if I've got a I think I've got another slide but I've got brand new slides uh, for these 523 carbies on the way so that's the outcome. It's a good salvage job that I'm pretty happy with that. It actually, even though they're bigger screws than original, it looks the part. No one would ever know. Right. So what I'm doing now is lapping in the needle and seat. I just used Autosol, and because this car be oh God only knows how long it's been sitting around for. Um, just to give the mating surfaces of your needle and seat keep them nice and clean and that's coming up alright I'll just keep going with that so I've got no line or anything around there these are a little bit notorious for, for leaking because it's obviously metal to metal so it's just a little bit of patience and persistence pays off and hopefully, hopefully, it'll be fine. You can put it in a drill press, but it's a little bit, a little bit aggressive, I reckon. You'll get it just by taking your time and lapping it. You can see how that's starting to come up shiny. There's a tiny little line around there. I'll just keep lapping it until that comes out. Okay, that's basically the finished product. I can't do a test run because I don't have a slide for the for the carby. I went out and had a look at my second hand stock. You can actually see my reflection behind the camera there. Um, I don't have another um, slide for this 523 carby. I do have them on order and they are on their way so I'll drop a new one in and then I'll do a test run after that. Um, basically this engine rebuild you're looking at around 20 hours worth of work. Uh, that's from first time I put a spanner on it to last time I put a spanner on it. Well, well once I get it test run. Um, this is also a bit of a Rolls-Royce rebuild as well. I mean um, CDI on it vapor blasting painting polishing you know it's um it's come up really well and so it should yeah so um great engine unfortunately there was a, a fair bit wrong with it in the way of the crank and things like that so uh there was um you know you got to do what you got to do. So yeah, new new rebuilt crank in this because the other one was shot and bits missing, a uh, bit of damage here and there. So, but anyway, we got there in the end. Um, and I think the end result's pretty good. Well, thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed um, this insight into how I actually go about doing an engine rebuild. Um, if you've enjoyed it, hit subscribe, um, 
please comment. Um, any feedback's good, negative or positive. Uh, it does take a bit to put these videos together and edit them and do all that sort of stuff. But uh, can't wait to get this on the test stand and run it up, and then it'll be sent out of here. If you do want me to do an engine rebuild, don't bother ringing because I'm booked out till 2024. Believe it or not, I can't take on any more work, and actually. Um, I'm actually pushing some work back at the moment because I've got to make um, parts. So because I'll make or I'll probably 25% of the parts that I was being in stock, um, I'm dwindling down on a, on a few, so I need to do a few production runs and get some stuff out of the way. Plus, that motorbike sitting there, my Harley Davidson, dropped the bottom end last week. So I'm going to be up for a bit of time and effort to pull that down. I've got a half pull down at the moment, but... Uh, we'll get we'll get to it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks very much.